Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we are going to study the popliteal vessels. So we have already talked about the popliteal fossa. So now let us discuss the origin course and termination of both the popliteal artery and the popliteal vein. Popliteal artery is one artery I am sure you remember. We have discussed this in the femoral artery when I talked about the fact that femoral artery which is basically an artery of the anterior compartment, it terminates at the hiatus magnus which is a opening in the adductor magnus muscle. That is where the femoral artery terminates and it terminates as the popliteal artery. So here I would like to go through that once again. Basically femoral artery it is the artery of the anterior compartment of your thigh. Now for something to come into the posterior compartment of the thigh that is because obviously the popliteal fossa lies in the posterior compartment. So if anything has to come into the posterior part, it has to cross this medial compartment muscle called the adductor magnus. Once the femoral artery enters this opening, it allows the passage of femoral artery from anterior to the posterior compartment. However, the femoral artery, once it reaches the hiatus magnus, it becomes the popliteal artery. So you can say the origin of popliteal artery is the continuation of femoral artery at the adductor magnus hiatus. Okay, uh, all right. Now what happens is the course of the popliteal artery, which is quite simple. We almost covered it in the popliteal fossa. The course of the popliteal artery is that it begins in the hiatus magnus and then it reaches the superior angle of your popliteal fossa. It traverses the popliteal fossa from the superior angle all the way till the inferior angle being the most deep content of this fossa. It is lying most medial in the upper part. It crosses the tibial nerve to become the most lateral content in the lower part. Then it encounters this muscle called popliteus. The moment the popliteal artery reaches the lower border of popliteus muscle, it terminates as anterior and posterior tibial arteries. So that's how the popliteal artery terminates. Once again, the origin of popliteal artery is the continuation of femoral artery at the hiatus magnus, after which it enters the popliteal fossa at its superior angle, traverses it till the inferior angle of the fossa and it terminates by dividing into its terminal branches, the anterior and posterior tibial arteries at the lower border of popliteus. What are the branches of popliteal artery? The popliteal artery gives off many branches. So these branches are categorized in the form of number one which are the muscular branches and we've discussed this in the anastomosis of back of thigh. The upper muscular branches were basically responsible for anastomosing with the fourth perforating artery. Also it supplies the muscles of the back of the thigh. So the muscular branches is the first category. Second category here are some cutaneous branches that it gives. And third category is the most important called the genicular branches. Now the genicular branches are five in number. How are they five and why are they five? Two superiors, one middle and two inferiors. These genicular branches are known as the superior lateral genicular, superior medial genicular, middle genicular inferior lateral genicular, inferior medial genicular arteries. The genicular arteries have a very important role when we talk about the anastomosis around the knee joint. So these were the branches of the popliteal artery. The middle genicular artery is basically going to pierce the oblique popliteal ligament, enter your knee joint and supply the ligaments of the knee joint. While the superiors and the inferiors will go to the anterior compartment in front of your knee and they will take part in the anastomosis over the patella or the knee joint. So this was all you needed to know about the popliteal artery. Now let's talk about the popliteal vein. It's quite simple because the popliteal vein is going to be very similar to the popliteal artery, just the difference is in direction. Since artery is going downwards, but the vein is going to come upwards. So this is very important to know that for arteries and veins usually run in the opposite direction. Where the arteries give branches, the veins collect tributaries. Because the veins have to carry blood to the heart, arteries carry it away from the heart. Because arteries have to supply oxygenated blood, veins have to take away deoxygenated blood. So anyway, the popliteal vein similarly begins just at the lower border of the popliteus muscle. 
So let's suppose there is a popliteus muscle. It begins at the lower border of popliteus muscle by the union of the veins that are accompanying the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. All right. So there are veins lying in union to the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. The veins lying close to these arteries, these are going to fuse at the lower border of popliteus muscle and form the popliteal vein. So the popliteal vein is formed. The popliteal vein will traverse the entire popliteal fossa running from its inferior angle all the way till its superior angle and once it reaches the hiatus magnus or the opening of the adductor magnus, it will terminate by continuing as the femoral vein. So it's almost a similar course as the artery. Also its tributaries in the popliteal vein are the similar veins corresponding to the branches of the popliteal artery. And in addition to that, the small saphenous vein is going to drain in the popliteal vein. The small saphenous vein is a superficial vein that we'll discuss later. This superficial vein goes to enter the popliteal vein and drain into it, all right? So this was the entire course, origin, termination and branches and tributaries of your popliteal vessels. Thank you so much for watching.